Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video. Um, in times like these where you can't go out, you can't go to school, you basically can't do anything, uh, we're in a crisis. Um, you, one thing becomes more and more important if you want to learn and if you want to test your things without being on site, without being in school, without being able to access any machinery, um, and that's simulation. Of course, there's emulation as well and digital twins and stuff like this, but we are looking at simple basic level simulation for students mostly for uh, people that want to test their program as well um, i already made a video on testing your programs with plc sim for the 1500s now i want to show you another software that is plc sim the so-called simulating modules there's three different softwares to simulate PLCs for Tia Portal, so Siemens PLCs. One I've covered a bit is PLC Sim, just a standard PLC Sim version 13, 14, 15, and so on. That's for real Tia Portal for the 1500s and 1200s. And then now I'm going to cover um, PLC Sim simulating modules. This one is for S7 300 and also S7 400 PLCs. Right. <clears throat> There's also a last one, PLC Sim Advanced. This is not really a simulation. I would even go there and would say this is an emulation, but we are basic level here. We don't need that. <laughs> we want to just simulate a very small, simple program using PLC Sim simulating modules, the one for the 300s. Um, and therefore, I've set up a new project here. I will add to our project an any S7 300 PLC. Actually, does not matter. I will just take my favorite here. Here we go. <clears throat> One thing, we are simulating. Simulation means we are not really doing anything in the hardware. You can add hardware modules, but for the simulation, they do not really make a difference. If they are there, if they are not there, does not really matter. Of course, there's some methods where it matters, but not for the simulation on this level. Um, so even if you do not have I.O. modules, your programs can still react on inputs and outputs as controlled by the simulation. In an emulation, different case, simulation, we don't really need to add. Of course, for tasks and so, you still need to add to have a finished project. Of course, you need to add those. But for the simulation, I do not have any IOs here. <clears throat> Next topic is let's make a small, simple program. I go to my main function here. And I just want to have a very, very easy program. Let's do this. Uh, let's do a parallel circuit and an output. I will have I00 and M. 36.3, some memory, and I will have Q04. So it doesn't matter, just a very simple small program. I give the, my variables here names, I give them symbols, so I can also see in the simulation um, which one am I controlling. So not just address-based, but also tag-based. This one I'm going to call sensor. This one I'm going to call memory. This one I'm going to call output, or let's call this one actually motor. So this is my little program. Now I would test this by downloading it to the machine. So clicking the download to device button, but I do not have a device here. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to simulate. So right next to this, we have upload. Don't press upload. We Right next to that, we have start simulation button. If I press this button, a different software is going to open. And this software is our S7 PLC Sim simulating modules. Um, usually, it directly installs when you install TR Portal. But I also have a download link set up in the description below. So if you do not have this installed, check the description below. With the link, you have to um, actually um, make an account on the Siemens website and then download it. That's how it is. So here we go. I have it installed, so I can just simply press the button. Make sure that you have selected on the left side here the PLC because that's what we want to simulate. I press the button and you see this additional software is going to open that little window here. This little window is our PLC. The thing that always opens first here is a so-called CPU. And the CPU has the common LEDs, SF system for uh, DP, DC run stop, so all the LEDs that we know, and also a switch that switches between the operating modes of the machine. I usually let the switch on run P, which means it runs the program, and P means you can still download a program to it. If you just set it to run, you cannot download any programs anymore. If it's in stop, you can download programs, but of course the PLC won't execute the program. So run P is my preferred um, thing here. 
One very important button on this is if I now click to tier portal or anywhere else, you see it is now in the background, which is for simulation sometimes stupid. So I want it to be stuck in the front. And there's this little pin. See a little pin? I pin it and now it's always on top. So even if I select and activate my tier portal, it's on top, which makes sense for um, simulation. <clears throat> yeah. Next thing is here. I go in my tier portal and there's my download window. And now I need to download this somehow. But where do I download it to? Right? Where do I download it to? My PLC has Profinet, Profibus, MPI. Right now, when you have not downloaded anything to this um, PLC SIM here, you see this drop down here? If I open the drop down, right now I could select all the communication methods. So MPI, Profibus, TCP, ISO, and local. Um, it actually does not matter. It actually does not really matter what you select. As I want to download with TCP, I will deselect TCP. But even if I have MPI, TCP will be listed. You see that down almost down here. <laughs> down there, we also have the address and all the addresses that we need for our PLC. So I should now be able to find a PLC with the IP address 192.168.0 and 1 or MPI address 2 or Profibus address 2 or local address 2. Whichever method you want to choose. My preferred method is, of course, Profinet. Some PLCs do not have Profinet, so you would need to choose some other communication method. So I start the search and you see I find a, an accessible device. This the accessible device is right now an unspecified CPU because, well, we haven't downloaded anything yet. The simulation doesn't know what it is, and it has exactly the same address. If I put those two on top of each other, you see it's the same address, 192.168.0 and 1. So that's the one we have. I, of course, want to download there, so I click on Load. And this is now downloading our whole program into the simulation here. And I click load again. When I click load, you will see the LEDs going crazy a little bit. You see it's in stop right now. And if I click finish, you will see system fault or, uh, is red and run blinks, meaning, hey, it's a startup. What we see now is here. We do not have local anymore. We do not have Profibus anymore. So somehow addresses are gone. That's because our PSC hardware does not, so the one we selected does only have Profinet and MPI. Uh, I said that the hardware is not emulated, it's just simulated, but still we're taking the, con uh, the, the communication methods with us. So we can only do those. You will also see in, uh, in my simulation software now, if I go to the dropdown, very hard to see now in the recording here, but only MPI and TCP IP are um, black, which means we only have those two methods now to communicate to our software here. I keep TCP because that's what I am using. If I go now into my um, simulation here, I can actually click on top on those little glasses on the monitoring and we are now accessing data in our simulation here. So I am online, everything is green, meaning we are connected to a PLC and that is exactly our simulation here. So in the simulation, what do we want to do? Hey, I want to turn on sensors. I could now right click modify to one. That's a little bit annoying to do that all the time. So this little tool gives us the opportunity to add an input byte, an output byte here, a memory byte, timer and counter, which we which I do not recommend those timers and counters. I recommend the uh, standardized ones, but that's okay. Um, a generic variable, you see this one they all look the same and they are basically the same window. So a generic one, if I say IB, which is input byte zero and hit enter, this is now exactly the same as this. So in a generic one, you can basically type in, if I type QB zero, I can have this is exactly this one. Memory, I'm using M36. So I would have to go MB for memory byte 36 hit enter and now this is my memory byte. I can transfer all of these windows to whatever I want, right? So they are all basically generic variables. I usually just take the generic one and type in what I need. So I have now one input at zero. So I take my generic one, uh, whoops, my generic one and I take in IB input byte zero. Right. I have a motor connected to output 0.4, which I want to test. So I take my generic one and I can also type Q 0.4, 
which is just bit 0.4. If I now hit enter, it's again very hard to see, but all of them are actually deactivated except of bit number four. Right, so if I just type Q0, so exactly this address, I only have this address, which usually does not make sense. I want the whole byte, QB0. Then we have M36.3, so generic variable, M36.3. I can only access point 0.3 now. Right, if I select it, you see it turns on. Um, I can also type MB36. I can also type, if you have bigger numbers, you can type MW. 36, for example, which is then a memory word. So two byte, you see now two byte could be an integer number, for example. So a little bit advanced, not going in detail with this. I just need my MB36 right now. And I want this to be displayed in bits and bits is this. Now I can control, I can perfectly test my program already. So I have my IB0, if I have sensor is connected to I00, I can just click the checkbox here. And you see by clicking the checkbox, actually the sensor gets activated, that's me activating the sensor, then my program acts and my program activates the motor. So even if I try to deactivate the motor here, I cannot deactivate the motor because the program overrides it. So the program is stronger than my simulation here. Also for input bytes, I can also select, the, uh, for memory bytes, I can select this one here. I can select all the other ones, but I have not implemented them in my program, so they will not do anything. Good. Last thing I want to show you is a so-called vertical uh, bit or vertical, well, display. Um, if you click on this one, you will see that a vertical display shows up. I can now type MB36 and this one here, is exactly the same as this one. So if I activate, you see it. If I activate all of them, you see they get activated in my vertical one exactly the same way. The advantage of the vertical one, right, of this one, is that you see exactly this is M36.0, M36.1. So you see exactly the address and you can also, you can also import the tags. Right now, this one here is just called memory. This one is just a sensor. This one is motor. I want to display those in my simulation as well. So how do you do that? Let's make those two vertical ones. So I want IB0 and I want QB0. And I have my M MB36. Uh, so those three I have. Let's reorient. You can just push them around here. No problem at all. <clears throat> Uh, you can also cascade the windows or tile them. If you click on cascade, you see they are on top of each other. If you tile them, they are automatically sorted, which I do not like too much because I prefer my output bits on the right side and my input bits on the left side and my memory in on the center, like it is in reality, kind of like from the principle on. So how do I get those tags, sensor, memory, motor into my simulation now? What you need to do is you go to your PLC tags here and there's the default tag table. So this is where my tags are in right now. I want to transfer those three into the simulation here. And there is on top, you see it, a little export button, right? In the show all tags, you could also export all tags. It's also here, right, export. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter in my case because I only have one tag table. I like to take my default tag table. So I click export and now I need to save it somewhere on my, it was just directly behind this. Now I need to save my tag table somewhere on my device. I have already created a folder on my desktop that is called PLC ZIM 300. And I call this tag table PLC text. And you see it's an XLSX file. So it's an Excel file. I get save, which in my case is speichern because it's set to German my windows. And I will export all elements. I hit okay. And now it's exported. So what I have now is in my folder where my project is, where I save my text, I have this tech table. It's an Excel table, right? It's an Excel table with all my variables, sensor, memory, motor, with the input address and so on. <clears throat> and this one I need to connect now to my PLC ZIM, which I can do by tools, options, import tier portal tags. I hit this and there I go. It's in my folder. I can select T PLC tags open this one and now you see hey this one here is the sensor 
hey, this one here is the memory that I've called memory, and this one is the motor. So you can now see your tags in TR, uh, in PSSM. A little disadvantage is if I change now something here, this is motor, it won't be changed directly in the um, simulation software. Well, but that's how it is. <laughs> you need to re-import them, export, import. You saw it takes a couple of seconds. All right, that's it. It's not motor blah, 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 right now, but that's okay. So that was a very quick um, overview of PLC Sim for the S7 300 and 400 PLC Sim simulating modules. I have put a download link in the description below. Um, there's of course more advanced stuff that you can do, for example, work with timers and counters and also with um, with decimals and real numbers and so on and so on, where I need an MD. Ah, oh, this one can't, okay. Um, yeah, so not looking into this, this is just for the basics for, for you. If you want to know anything more about this, Google it or leave a link in the, uh, leave a, not leave a link in the description, leave a um, comment on this. I try to get to it. Um, but if, if someone else sees a comment that they can answer, please answer them as well. We all need to work together now. Um, yeah. If this was any helpful, leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe and ring the bell. I upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And also I have set up a um, GoFundMe. You will find that in the description below. So um, if you think my work is valuable, just throw some stuff at me uh, using the link. Uh, that would be very cool, but a like is enough. So don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video. Stay healthy and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>